and it's where they're shooting. It takes them three hours to actually take control of the square, so that's a lot of shooting. The people have a couple of Molotov cocktails, and they have the barriers they try to put up. I saw them take city buses and try to put them in neutral and then everybody pushed to try to block the roads to keep the tanks from coming. They were both tanks and armored personnel carriers. And you know, they whacked the bus and the bus was in its way and they'd crunch right over these concrete dividers. Nothing would stop a tank. I think most of the students who stayed until the last moment of a tenement protest somehow already made up their mind that if they have to die, they would die with their dignity, they would die with their hopes and dreams, and they would die right in the middle of Tiananmen Square and no place else. The soldiers are shooting on them too. This is a battlefield weapon. This is not um, ordinary bullets in a handgun. These are major weapons, assault rifles, and the crowds were dense and they would shoot and shoot and shoot. Soldiers were killing randomly towards demonstrators, yet in the center of the storm, thousands of students sit together, hand in hand, singing songs, determined to be martyrs of their belief. I have never seen anything more beautiful than this. And so it went on until four o'clock. And I don't know what's going to happen. I think the students are going to get killed. On the 4th of June, around 5 a.m., the square was ringed with jumpy troops. The remaining students huddled around the monument of people's heroes as a couple of intellectuals tried to negotiate a peaceful withdrawal from the square. So they went out and figured out a way to talk to a colonel who apparently was in charge and was able to get an agreement that if the students leave by certain hours, the troops will not kill the people. And then uh, Feng Sun De, Chai Ling and myself led the last several thousand survivors through a particular entrance and left the square around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. Troops finally took control, crushing the goddess of democracy in their wake. Most of the fighting and most of the death and, and wounding did not take place in the square itself. There was relatively little uh, right within it. It took place as the soldiers came in from all different directions and fought their way down both the avenue of eternal peace and through other avenues of ingress into the city. So the massacre was not, as most people think, you know, the Tiananmen Square massacre. It was a Beijing massacre. The killing continued throughout the night and into the following day. On the 9th of June, 1989, Deng Xiaoping appeared on television praising the military for successfully crushing the riot. The state's first report of the event claimed that a thousand soldiers died, while only 23 counter-revolutionary thugs and hooligans perished. These numbers seemed improbable, even in a country used to hyperbolic propaganda, and soon casualty figures were revised to 300 counter-revolutionaries. Western experts put the number between several hundred and a few thousand. We are unlikely to ever know the real numbers. The square is patrolled day and night by secret police watching for any sign of protest. Most dissidents were jailed or exiled. In 2005, Zhao Ziang died under house arrest. To his last breath, Zhao refused to renounce his opposition to the 4th of June crackdown. And his opposition cost his freedom. He was under house arrest until his death. 16 years later. And according to recently available information, after Tiananmen massacre, Deng Xiaoping have approached Mr. Zhao Xiang several times with offer for him to return to the government on the condition he would give up his position on June 4th. And every time he turned him down. And by doing so, that Zhao Xiang is consciously defending a fundamental principle of a civilization in China, 
that the government would never be allowed to publicly massacre its own peaceful demonstrators under any circumstances. If Chinese government to survive, if Chinese society to survive, that principle will always be a fundamental pillar, and Jiao Ziyang would symbolize that spirit. China continues to grow as a world power. Tiananmen remains a thorn in its side. The protests were the first time a popular uprising challenged the Communist Party. As China moves into the 21st century and does more and more business with the rest of the world, only time will tell what new challenges face China and its people, and whether those challenges will bring unity or conflict to Tiananmen Square.